To all the summer school members, listeners, and viewers at home, I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Our lesson for this week is Lesson 4. It entitled The Bible, the Authoritative Source of Our Theology. Before we continue with our lesson, I, I would ask us to pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you in a special way for protecting us even in the fearful time of COVID-19. We want also to thank your message to protect our country, South Africa, and uh, to keep us alive in the course of the period of pain. We also want to express our gratitude to the bereaved who have lost their loved one because of this disease. We hope that you will protect our country and in our land. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For the lesson, you have already indicated that the title of the lesson is say, The Bible Authority and Source of Theology. We would love to understand that the Bible is actually the source to support our belief and faith. Many uh, Christian faiths also use the Bible as a guardian. Now to go to our memory text for this week in lesson 4, we found it written in the book of Isaiah 8 verse 20 in the New King James Version. I read, to the law and to the testimony, if thy do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. To make clarity, we can also consult the New International Version in the same book of Isaiah 8 verse 20. This version read like this, consult God's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to this, where they have no light of God. Mm -hmm. Now, in life and in our faith and beliefs, there are elements that shape our understanding and interpretation of the scripture. These factors are five of them. Our lesson is covering the five factors which shape our understanding and what does they do in our role, in our faith and beliefs. These are tradition, culture, experience, reasoning, and the Bible itself. Each of these elements and source they have got, they shape how we worship God, how we apply the scripture across and to the different denominations. Now, theology is defined as a study of religious faith and practices, an experienced study of God. So, in our belief and our faith, there are issues which explain uh, and which influence our belief system with regard to the Bible and the Bible revelation. I will start explaining the tradition. Tradition is associated with the way how people live. I said tradition is associated with our way of, of life or uh, how things were done in the past and uh, a reputation of performance of ritual practices a strict carriage of rules which are carried from generation to generation. Now tradition has a role in our religious belief and faith and it might be good or it might be bad. I will start with the bad part of religion if they become a source of authoritative explanation or making shaping us our, our lives. Uh, when Jesus Christ came here on earth, he was confronted by our leaders, maybe I can say the Pharisees who were, and the Jews, who were the people who were upholding the tradition. But they mixed the tradition and the faith, and they took tradition and the worshiping of God as part of 
of a tradition. Now, immediately when the tradition uh, undermines the scriptures, then that tradition is bad. When you look in the book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 8 and 9, it is written that you make the word of God useless by putting your own teaching in its place. Unquote. Those quote. Now, what does it say here? It means immediately when the tradition in the church become a sole a source of authority, then people undermine the scriptures and they want people to take the, 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 the tradition first and then uh, the truth of God. Now, it is very uh, bad that we uphold our tradition in, in our church in our faith because sometimes the traditions are not in line with the, the Bible truth. For instance, uh, people who believe who are traditionally bound, they believe that tradition is the only way of life. Now when we understand that alone, uh, sometimes they, they call they want us to worship uh, the forefathers because it's part of the tradition. But immediately when the tradition does not connect us with the, with the Bible truth, it's only connecting us about the past, forgetting the Bible truth, that tradition is not encouraged. But there are other good things about tradition. Some of the norms and standards of traditions uh, which people practice are, are very good because for instance, uh, you find that there's a situation now where when the, some of the tradition display Ubuntu, display Ubuntu, in other words, Ubuntu is part of tradition which, which are good. So those traditions are, are accepted. Now, when we preach the biblical truth, we must not mix with tradition because eventually people will assume that tradition is a way of salvation. Now, anybody who teaches other things rather than the biblical truth uh, uh, must be accused or must be cursed, as it says in the book of Galatians 1 verse 9. It is, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you rather than uh, what we, we have received in the past, let him be cursed. So tradition can become a stumbling block for our salvation. The other factor which I have mentioned is culture. Now culture is way of life around us. Now in culture, any one of us belong to a particular culture. Culture is categorized and establishes ethnicity, empires and social status. Now any culture which is brought in the church uh, it must not be a culture uh, which does not uphold the scriptures and the public truth. Any culture which we practice, it must not bring up or promote a certain group of people or a certain group of social status, but it must not also be a culture which is not accepted or acceptable in the public truth. There are many cultures which are practiced. Now those cultures, uh, we can say they may be good culture, we may say maybe bad culture, but every culture uh, that uh, is practiced in the church, it must promote uh, the growth of the church. For instance, in our time, we find that the Sabbath is broken. People come late, it becomes a culture. Uh, people concentrate so much in material things rather than uh, reading the Bible. You find competition in the church, people come with expensive cars, they come with expensive clothes, and then they cause a certain culture which even our new believers find it very difficult to cope with. So that culture must not be promoted. If we read in the scripture, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, we are told that, as I've already indicated, that the culture is a way of life. 
We are told that you must not love the world and the things of the world. Because those who love the world and the things of the world, the truth of God is not in them. Because things uh, which we look material, they come to pass and they, they will go past, but the scripture will remain forever. So immediately when culture becomes a culture of the world, then the love of God departs in us. So it is very important that we understand those concepts because these are things which either give us the power to accept God or the power not to accept God. Now the third thing is experience. Many people say experience is the best teacher. The Bible writer, the lesson writer says uh, experience can be misleading. It is true. But all of us learn by certain things which God has given to us. We learn by feeling, we learn by touch, we learn by smell, we learn by hearing, we, we learn by uh, contacting other people. So all the five senses which I have already mentioned, they give us sort of an experience. Now, when we, we listen to the Bible, when we do our mission, preaching people, they get a new experience because in the past they used to worship their forefathers. Now, when we bring Jesus Christ in their life and our faith and our belief in their life, it becomes a new culture. Therefore, a culture, it, sorry, therefore, a culture or an experience which they learn in the church or any experience which they learn in the church, it must be a good experience. Now, God, by nature, he gave us experience so that we can appreciate things, we can appreciate relationship, we can appreciate music, we can appreciate uh, um, anything which brings God to be worshipped, to, be, to, to fear God. So God gave us the experience so that at the same time we know who God is and we know that God died for us when we still sin us. So that new experience which is brought in the church, it makes the new believer to love God because they know that if you keep God's commandment, there's a positive effect. I will continue now to another point uh, that is reasoning. Reasoning is the, is the ability of us to think, is the ability of us to set to go to conclusions which are positive. It is the ability to differentiate good and evil. God has given us the ability to choose. So reasoning, uh, as we experience, uh, we also get the ability to understand the scripture. Now, immediately when we, we uphold the reasoning of men, like eventually in the 18th centuries, people who cannot explain our, reason, our, our, our origin, they started to develop certain theories, like the philosophy of reasoning, which draw men away from God, which are teachings of men. So Crete, Aristotle, and Kant from Germany, they started to explain the world in how they see it. Now, immediately when we draw reasoning, not going together with the Bible, not seeking God's wisdom, that means that reasoning does not uh, abide with the scripture. That reasoning makes us to be atheists. That reasoning makes us to believe in science and science alone. We don't say people must not reason. God has given this reasoning and uh, to, to be able to, to see things in a certain way. It makes us to think, it makes us to apply the scripture. It will give us the ability to be creative. Now reasoning, when it is associated with it giving glory to man, that reasoning does not uh, uh, is not recommended because then it means it's taking away from God.
Brothers and sisters, we know that the last uh, thing which he us is the Bible. When I am asked why people use Christian faith, use the Bible to support their faith and belief, it's because the Bible is not only the word of God, it is God in print. The Bible uh, is the only document that gives and command our life. Uh, the Bible supersedes all documentation because it has been inspired. People who wrote the Bible, people who were able to work towards what we see in the Bible, the Old and New Testament, they did not write the Bible in their own flesh. They, they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. So the Bible itself is God's word, is inspired, it has got divine origin. It is inspired by the Holy Spirit. That is why when we read the Bible, we need to study, we need to pray, because praying brings us to God and it gives us the power to get the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible is too big, but when we read the Bible, uh, with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reminds us on all the things which God wants from us. It points a sin to us. Say, if God in the Ten Commandments say, Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery. These are regulations which point us to God and our neighbor. Because there are two major rules uh, which are driving us is to love God with all our, our heart, our spirit, and all our heart, and meaning that we have to love God, and then we cannot love God if we don't love our, our own neighbor. So the Ten Commandments, the four, the four first uh, regulation, they point us to God. The other six, they point us to, uh, to our neighbor in the relationship with our neighbor and our experience with our neighbor. So. The Bible supersedes all other documents in our faith. Now, God wants him to be worshipped by in faith and in spirit. Uh, God wants us uh, in truth. We must worship God in truth. And we cannot please God. We don't have faith. Now, people, when they are uh, they preach, they get an experience. The experience, uh, when they are with God, they, their faith is developed because God is the original God of our faith and He is the only one who ends also our faith. If you read in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, we know that faith uh, is a gift from God. It's a, it's God starts our faith, God ends our faith. Now, the Bible is the only document which actually explains things which we cannot see. The Bible is, is good like faith. The Bible is the only document that tells us about our origin. Science could not tell us our origin. There are a lot of theories which have been to the theory of evolution, the theory of ben, the ben -Ben theory, because man is trying to get an explanation. But God has allowed other things for us to know with our children. If you look, look at the book of Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 29, verse 29, it says, Secrets belongs to God, and the, those things which you must know, uh, they, they belong to us and our children. Now, the Bible is the only the document which explains things which you cannot see. And those things which you cannot see, uh, they are classified. There are other things which we cannot see with our eyes. Therefore, we need other technology like microscope uh, to see smaller things. Very small, like COVID-19, cannot be seen by our own eyes. They use microscope to see. They adjust the microscope, uh, microscope so that you can see the smallest particles. Now, the smallest particles of a millimeter is a micron, 1,000 micron makes one millimeter. In other words, there are other things, measurement, which the eyes cannot reach, more than the microns, which, which, is, which we can see using a microscope. So by faith, we believe the things are there. 
because of the Bible. We believe that there is God. All people in the past, even though they were not, uh, they were not preached, they believe that the supernatural powers, uh, the Zulu say, unum, unum, um. other people they say, unum, dimo. other people say, una, unum, dali. and they know these things before even they knew about the Bible. So there are things which are beyond our understanding, which cannot be proven by science. Because it's, it, it, is, it is very, there are other things which you cannot even see completely using the microscope. That is why science is, is developing. There are new discoveries in, in the atmosphere. There are new discoveries in the sea. But people will never discover other things which God does not allow us to know. Uh, that is why when we look, when we believe, we believe on things we can see uh, and believe on things we cannot see. Things which we can see, there are substances which we cannot see, like the wind for instance. Uh, we can see their effect, but we can't see the wind. So there are other things which are beyond the brain of a human being. That means it needs to be believed by faith only. So, like God and our, our, our belief system of Christianity, it needs faith, it needs beliefs, it needs that we accept that there is God, there is somebody above everything, like the disease uh, up to now. Scientists are not able to develop even a vaccine. Maybe they will develop it later. But if God has allowed that eventually to get the, the, the vaccine or the treatment, um, uh, which is a prescribed, which is internationally recognized. It is God's wish that we do that because even difficult times does not last long. So God allows this to happen so that the difficult, the, the bad experience we get in diseases and or any experience we get when we, we, when we, we may be one of our of our family members has passed away, that feeling does not make a bad experience only, but it makes us to pray, it makes us to come to God. So the Bible is the only document which also gives us consolation. The Bible is the only document which is also a prophet. The Bible prophesies things to come, prophesies the succession of kings, it prophesies the politics, it tells us about things to come. So there is no any other document in the universe except the Bible that explains all things. Now, in closing, if we look at all the other factors I've already mentioned, the tradition, the culture, the experience, the reasoning, and the Bible, all of these things, the other elements, the tradition, culture, experience, and reasoning, must be in line with the Bible. Now, in our church, there, there are other scholars who believe that the Bible is not of this thing. It is not our duty to judge because the content of the Bible has got a divine origin. It has got the power to change men. The Bible has can change men. That is why uh, when we do other bad habits, the Bible can correct us those bad habits. Because the habits uh, does not just start. It start with the experience. It goes to the action we do. When you continue to do the actions, it becomes a habit. When the continual habit is done, it becomes a culture. Or oh, sorry, it becomes a, 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 a character. Uh, habitual things we do which are bad, which we have experienced from the origin. Uh, when they are bad, the Bible is the only document which can correct us. So therefore, for that reason, the Bible has got authority. The Bible has got divine origin. The Bible is the word of God. The Bible is, is God in print. The Bible is uh, explaining how God created us and how God has created the universe. So therefore, it is our duty as Christians to take the higher authority, which is the Bible. Because the Bible is like it has got magisterial powers and decisions. And it does not change. It has been there for over time. The other things like tradition change, culture change, our experience, we cannot rely on it. On it. 
reasoning change over time and that is why Paul does not want to us to rely on human development uh, but he wants us to rely on the public. It is our call for all the members who are and the viewers who are looking that the Bible must become one of our friends. We, we must develop good culture like a culture of praying at home, a culture of praying for other people, a culture of uh, understanding that there is a God who is still in control. May the Lord bless us in this, this presentation and hope that in the future, when we look at the Bible, we will have a change of mind and we will study the Bible as the only authoritative source of our theology and as the only document which is, which is uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit. I thank you.